All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask is that we try and keep this as professional as possible. I know how devastating this news was to all of us, particularly me when I got that phone call <laughs> Friday morning from the Kroger representative saying, we're closing your store, and oh, by the way, in two weeks. Um, there's nothing we can do to keep them here. I've reached out. Uh, Representative Lewis has reached out. They're not going to stay. So the focus on this meeting, we hope, will be, now what? How do we move forward? How do we get a grocery store back in town again? And where do we go from here? So that's kind of what we're looking at. So I'm going to basically, Nick and Madonna are, have microphones. If people would like to speak, you can raise your hand and they'll come and talk to you. We want to hear from the community. Okay. <clears throat> do we have anybody over here on this side? All right. And if you would uh, please state your name and then make your comment, please. Good evening. Most of you probably don't know who I am. I'm Marcel Burns. I bought the motel south of town a little over almost three years ago. And I'm a fellow business owner here. Um, we need a grocery store. We need to figure out what we can do. It doesn't just affect me. I mean, I have customers that come in, and when I tell them, you're welcome to go to the store, cook get anything, put it in your microwaves, cook it, they are just absolutely thrilled. So um, we need to do this, guys. I'm coming. That's all right. But I want my side to have more comments than his side. <laughs> Just saying. This is we have, we have on dishes side. on the line tonight, people. Okay. You're my side. I don't want any dishes. All right. Hi, Stephanie Smith. Um, I just don't know. Do we have any places that have offered to come into our town? Not at this point, but we're only two days into the news, so we have really had an opportunity to reach out to anybody yet. I got another one. <laughs> Hi, Linda Fisher. I was wondering how soon is the store that we know as Dylan's now available for somebody else to come in? I believe the lodge is still in some kind of negotiations with Dylan's at this point, so we don't have that information yet. Um, I have every confidence that they will do what they can to try and make sure that the building is available so we can bring someone else in. I have one. I have one. <laughs> yeah, Lennon Lyon. Um, I guess one of the questions that I have is that um, whether anybody either with the city, the lodge, or anything else has thought about possibly even approaching the Dillon stores about uh, like some of the coolers, stuff like that, and offering them, say, all of them. you know, if, if they will, all of them. If, if they would buy, if we could buy this stuff. How about giving them to us? Yeah, or something. <laughs> but then that way they wouldn't have to move it out and it would help, you know, us be able to possibly attract some other store in here. Like I said. Yeah. The Lodge is in negotiations with Dylan still. I'm sure they're having a lot of the same thoughts and will do whatever they can to make sure that we have as turnkey of an operation there as we can get. Well, for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Jerry Long. Uh, I'm going to have trouble with your statement of keeping it civil. Uh, we... We as a community, I've been here for a long time. I've seen mammals and Dylan's both here. I think we do need to get another company in. Uh, I did some checking over the noon hour. We always hear about St. John being the 1,200 population of a little town that raised Dean Wade. <laughs> and uh, I did some checking. St. John is about 1,200, Mac, or Stafford is about 1,000, and uh, Maxwell is about 500. There's 
parks me on the 2013 census. Uh, 4,039 people in Stafford County. And I think we all utilize or did utilize Dillon's. I know uh, here's where it comes hard for me. I am a very local person. I trade local, as many of you do. And I think we need to talk to. Let's start out saying, I probably am not a person that forgives easily. I probably won't go back to Dillon's if it means going to go back. I probably won't go from there going. And I don't like Walmart. But my daughter does most shopping for me, so I guess I'll have to send her to Walmart because I won't go to Dillon's. But in that in that thought, I don't have a problem with them. Closing, I know you got bean counters. And it's just dollars, but uh, it's people out here, and they never came to us and said, "What would it take to keep our business here?" If they would have come to us, or if they would have come to me, and I'm sure a lot of pe you people have seen, if they would have said, "If we raise our Prices 5% more so we can make a profit. Would you do business with us? I would say yes. I know one of the problems, we all appreciate this plus card when it comes to figuring our bill, but that has practiced people. That has said, you went to state or to Great Bend or you went to Pratt. To go to Dillon's instead of shopping here. I think we need to, like it's been said, we probably won't be able to keep Dillon's. I think it's a shame. I like the products. I like their people that are going to lose jobs. Uh, I had a bad experience last night. I got one vice left and that's smoking. These Austin, Heather, these people know that I walk in there and get a pack of cigarettes every day. They give me a hard time and say, aren't you ever going to quit? And I give them a hard time back and say, yeah, I quit yesterday or I'm going to tomorrow. But they know me. I went to a local Dollar General last night after the ball game and uh, so I need a pack of cigarettes. And the young girl at the register said, uh, I got to see your ID. <laughs> <laughs> and I said a few things I shouldn't have said. And I said, can't you tell I'm 67? <laughs> now, let's get a little ridiculous. This is why I like Dylan's. And I hope we can get somebody else in with the same philosophies up until this time as the one's had to hear go Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Jerry brings up some really good points. Hang on just a second. We'll give everybody a chance. But one of the things that we as a community need to decide is that whether or not we're going to keep our business as 100% local as we possibly can. Uh, I'm guilty. There's Great Bend and Pratt Dillon swipes on my loyalty card. Um, if we get a grocery store back in town, that won't happen anymore. I will support my community to make sure that we keep a business here. And that's something that we all need to be thinking about is whether or not we're willing to make that commitment to our community. Anyone else on this side or over here? Why Nick goes gets her comment. You guys, there's still plenty of seats up here if you guys want to come on in and take a seat. I promise I won't make you speak if you sit on the front row. You might do karaoke later, but that's just what depends. They say there's a whole row of chairs up here too. Um, 
I'm Carol Page, and honestly, my concern right now is um, I know that Dylan has made their choice, it sounds like, and I know we want to get another place in, but it may take us some time. My concern right now is what the city of St. John is going to do for helping the elderly that cannot get out of town to get things so that if they can't afford to have, buy, have somebody pay to go do it from fixed incomes. And so I guess that's one of the things I'd like to see us look at is what can we put together. Um, I travel, so I have no problem trying to help to do that. Obviously, we as a council haven't had an opportunity to meet. Um, it will be on the agenda for the February 2nd meeting. I do know that I've spoken with several of the different council members and we are talking about taking the city bus to Great Bender Pratt several times a week for those who don't drive. Um, there has been at least one Facebook group that's been formed by Randy Olive that is looking for people to help bring groceries in, um, offer to pick stuff up when people are going out of town. So I, I think the community is going to be well taken care of. Richard Blakesley, I own Triple Creek Outfitters, and uh, we use Dillon's tremendously in our business to feed our clients and take care of our hunters, and so you just brought up something about, uh, which I think is really good, we're going to get a bus and, you know, get our seniors to where they need to go. Uh, in saying that, you said something about going to Pratt or, or Great Bend. Uh, what's, why couldn't we go to Stafford? And, and do take care of it. That's another little town. Absolutely. If that's what the community wants, that's what we'll do. That's just a suggestion. Well, you raised your hands. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm Ron Scott, most of you know me. And I don't know if it's too late now, but has Dylan said they would do anything to help us transition? We've been loyal customers. And all of a sudden, it's here and gone. Just a thought. The individuals that I have spoken with have um, offered no assistance towards us. Again, for them, it's a business decision. It's dollars and cents. Um, for us, it's people. But that's just where it's at at the moment. Tammy Menkoff, I'm also a business owner here. I own Poppy's Pizza. On a daily basis, I was always at Dylan's. Um, without them, it's going to be tremendous. Um, one of the biggest things that I saw with when Dylan's made their decision, they said that they had made it in careful consideration. I was really upset about that comment because if it was careful consideration, why are we putting all of our employees of Dylan's out within two weeks? That just really upset me. Um, we really need to try really hard on, and I agree with Richard. Um, Take our, everybody to Stafford if we possibly can. Keep it within the county. Don't take it out of the county. Because that was one of the big issues Dylan's was saying, that we, we was taking it out of our community. We just as well keep it in our community. And if anything possible, if we can get everything that we possibly can at Stafford until we get a new one here, that's what I'm going to do. And, and that's a great idea. And I apologize to Paul's Grocery because I tend to forget that they're there. So we will definitely run routes to Stafford as much as we can. Okay, you're on his side, but you can't for me. <laughs> My name is Fred Seifert. I'm the mayor of Seward. And this isn't only affecting St. John. There's a lot of people in Seward that come down here. I, you know, it's, it affects a lot of people. I just, I can't. And I can't say they don't have business. Every time I'm in here, it's packed. I went in there in the middle of the afternoon yesterday, and there was two cab directors running with people waiting. Yeah, again, I mean, I, I wish that I could offer all of our folks a better explanation than it was a business decision, but I can't. And, but what I do know is I don't think petitions or anything else, no matter what we do, I don't think we're going to get them to stay. So. Oh, I was just uh, Jim Ronan speaking, and I was just wondering, had, uh, has anybody been in touch with the Stafford store and the owner? Um, I believe he's in attendance this evening, but uh, to my knowledge, no. At least not yet. The, the, what we wanted to do this evening was to reach out to the community and find out what all of you want. 
And obviously, we want to keep the grocery store in town from what I'm hearing. So that's going to be our focus. Our next um, goal was to keep it from going off in 15 different directions and to try and maybe put together a committee, if the community thinks that's a good idea, to work on this project so that we're making a concentrated effort in one place. So that's, that was kind of another thought process behind this. A uh, question on the uh, Dillons in the two weeks. Is that set in stone? It is. Unfortunately, yes, it is. They will close their doors at the end of business on Saturday, February 6th. And the reason for that? They say it's a business decision. And the reason it's a business decision is... <laughs> You know, I wish I could give you an answer. No, I, honestly, I wish I could give you an answer. What I'm saying is, in Hutchinson, they have a store on North Main, and they've threatened to close it three or four times. And they always come out, and the, elder, the elderly that live around it, that's the only place they've got to shop, and they always leave it open. So... Sometimes I spoke. they're set in stone, but if the right person can get to the right person, maybe things could change. I wish that I could believe that that was an option. I spoke with three different representatives at Dillon's on Friday. Um, the last one was not particularly pleasant, but I understand that he had a job to do. Um, I've spoken with a few other people that have some contacts at Kroger. And I think the fact that they're giving us two weeks' notice tells us what we need to know. And that's that they're done and they're leaving and we need to figure something else out. I just genuinely don't believe that we will be able to convince them to stay. Can I say one more thing? I'm Jim Chancellor from Stafford. Um, my wife and I own the store at Stafford. Uh, we bought it three years ago from the family. Uh, it was, we went out on a huge limb. I mean, it was, it's still scary. It, it takes a lot of community support just to keep your neck above water. And if anybody operates a retail business, they know. It takes a lot. The overhead is tremendous. And the little store here, it's the same boat. The overhead is tremendous. And if Kroger can't see a profit, they're not going to mess with it. And like somebody commented earlier about the cards, I challenge everybody in here, clip it right now, tonight. Clip it. If you're serious, clip it. Kroger is doing you guys bad. You know, and I compete with Kroger. I compete with the store over here, Dollar General. You know, it's gone on for 30 years. It, it, it's tough, you know, without community support. Small towns will struggle, just like what you folks are going through. And it wasn't very many years ago, duck walls pulled out. That was a shock. Now they don't even exist. You know, it, it's it's huge. You know, and if St. John is fortunate enough to have somebody come in, you have to support them 100%. Yes, you're not going to get the little can of artichokes that you want Christmas Eve. <laughs> Deal with it. You know, that, that's fact. You know, and if, if Kroger go, goes in there and just cleans that building out, it, it, it probably take a half million dollars to start. By the time you put the cases in, shelving, the POS system, inventory, hire somebody to run it, it's a lot of dollars. And it won't be easy. <coughs> But if y'all are serious about cutting your cards, do it tonight. Get rid of them. They didn't do you one single favor. I got, I got 
too. They can fight over who wants it. Um, I'm Carolyn Dunn, Economic Development Director. I have put out a few feelers, um, very, very preliminary, so I don't want to expand on it too much. But it seems to be there's three different solutions that small towns in our position have come up with, generally speaking. One, an independent grocer. Two, some type of cooperative where each, for, where people put their own capital into raising that half million dollars that Jim Chancellor just talked about needing to get a, a store going. Or third, there are examples of just kind of community run, run stores where volunteers are doing things. I think that we're probably in a better position than some of those communities that are trying to figure out those solutions and that we've still got 1,200 people. Some of the places that are dealing with no grocery store are doing this with 300 people. Still, you got to think about how much cash flow it takes to make those things run, just as he's saying. And, um, you know, we're dealing with a situation where they're not going to tell us what their data is of what they've been getting. You know, they, they have no interest in helping us find a different store because their shopper's card data tells us already that the shoppers that shop here are shopping at their other stores. They have no, they have no vested interest in helping continue a store here. And uh, so we're going to have to kind of start from scratch on how, how much business there even is here to make it viable for the next, the next person. So when I look at what it takes to try to recruit that independent store, that'd probably be the best solution for our community. It puts less responsibility on our shoulders to be managers of it. They've got to, they've got to know how much to be able to predict is going to come in in business. So when I look at that idea that we're all really ready to rally now, we're ready to sign our names on a petition, there's a part of me that says that petition needs to say, how much money do you spend in groceries a week? How much will you pledge to keep here in our town so that they've got something to base their decision on, whether they can even make this go? One of the challenges is going to be, and Jim brought this up in an earlier conversation with me, one of the challenges is going to be, how will someone finance a business coming into this town when the track record is that the one before you chose to close the doors? You're, it's not going to be easy to get bank financing for something like that. Economic development can play a small role in that with a revolving loan program we have, but it's not enough to, to do the whole thing. So um, I guess my challenge is to the community, more than just the spirit of this, are you willing to really pledge an amount of money that you're willing to contribute weekly or in getting this going? My name is Rodney Chrisman. I've been in the community probably a long time, as long as anybody else. Uh, Carolyn's right. We've got a problem, but we need to look at it as a whole. The man in Stafford has a grocery store. There's one in uh, Claflin. There's one in La Crosse. You know, there's a lot of little grocery stores around them, but communities that are about the same size or smaller than what we've got, and they're seeming to make it. I don't know if we can get a satellite deal, you know, working with like a cooperative of little grocery stores or whether, what we can do exactly. But I think if you get on the internet, you can figure out around where everybody's at, how many stores they got, what kind of stores they have, and stuff like this. You know what I mean? It's, your internet's the best station. I think, to figure out what's going on. And then, you know, hope everything else works out too. Good evening, I'm uh, Representative Greg Lewis. I first found out about our dilemma uh, Friday about noon. I got an email from somebody here in the hometown area about the store, and then within an hour I got a phone call from a lobbyist with Dillon's and then I've talked to another lobbyist for Dillon's, and then later in the day, an employee of Dillon's. Uh, we've touched upon, they've, they've tracked your business on the Dillon's cards, and I was given a number, it kind of went like this. Uh, on those cards, they track that of all the people shopping here at St. John, uh, two-thirds of them were spending 50% or more of their grocery money 
in Great Bend or Pratt. That gives you an idea how much how much of that was flowing out outside of St. John. Uh, I know I've had a couple people share with me, but there wasn't a pharmacy here, so they went to Great Bend or Pratt for the pharmaceutical needs. Uh, I've heard some things expressed from other people visiting with Council and Carolyn, and, and this is time for us to come together and decide where we're going in the future. And we need to try to look out into the future a little bit. And, uh, you know, what's it going to take? What's our community going to take for the next five years, ten years? Let's even look out 15 or 20. Yes, we need a grocery store, but maybe there's something else that the community needs that we can kind of bundle together. Maybe, maybe bundling something would be of a benefit. And this is a time when we brainstorm and come up with those ideas. Uh, I think this can this could work out to be something very positive. It's going to take a lot of work on everybody's part. Uh, I did take the liberty of uh, contacting Mike Lapel's office, Jerry Moran, and Pat Roberts' office, but primarily reaching out to them to see if there's any federal funds that would help sustain uh, local businesses that are that are for small communities and are essential businesses. Uh, because it's Friday afternoon, I hadn't heard anything back, so I'm guessing Monday, if there's anything out there, it would be the soonest I would hear anything along that line. But I'm, I'm happy to see that tonight you're being pretty positive about the direction we need to go in the, from here. And so I congratulate you on that, and I ask for everybody to continue to work together and pull together, and we'll find a St. John solution. Would anyone else like to make a comment? My name is Brandon Crawford. I moved to the area about three years ago. Um, currently, I live in Pawnee Rock and moved up to Larned because of my job. I was working at B&B Meats up in Larned uh, about, for about 18 months. I was the head butcher, head meat cutter. My trainer was a industry efficiency expert. I then worked and worked at Dillon's for about six months as their meat market manager. I have experience with my family that ran two different restaurants back in Georgia. I was a manager for the Jackson Hewitt tax kiosk in 2014. I have contacts with all of the merchandisers that service Dillon's, Pepsi, Coke, Nabisco, Keebler, <coughs> these kinds of people that come through that put those products on the shelf, Sara Lee that does the bread, these kinds of things. My background is in meat. A lot of the time at b and <coughs> We were competing with Dillon's on their price. A lot of the times we could beat them on their price. A lot of the local restaurants, like the one uh, Mom's Bar and Grill, Squeaks Club, they bought their meat from B&B. &B. I know their product, I know how to make it, I know where to get the raw materials to make fresh hamburger right in this area. I have the experience in the custom cut industry to possibly expand into doing custom cut, which I know is a big business in this area with all the farmers in the local community that buy cattle and buy half a beef and these kinds of things, but we have to go to Larney or to Hutchinson to get those. I have contacts, I have experience, and I have the willingness to go into this facility to start this grocery store up. What I don't have is the funds. And if the community can pull together to fund this thing, I am more than willing to go in to get this thing started and to manage this business so that we have a grocery store here in our small communities. said, but I'm going to tell you folks, St. John's had a heck of a time trying to get other businesses in. I don't think we've got the time to bundle anything. We need a store, and we need a store now. And I'm one that says, if you're going to set up a committee, or if this gentleman's ideas would come to pass, 
I think there's several in here, including me, who would say, I'll put whatever I can financially or energy-wise, and the energy's getting less than the financial. <laughs> but I think we all need to take advantage of Paul's for now. My daughter is a customer over at Paul. She lives in Stafford. So this is a nice store. I've never been in there because I had Dylan's. I'm going to be now. And I think we need to, we need to form a committee, see what we can come up with, talk to this gentleman. First of all, we've got to see what the lodge can do with contractual rights. But well, Donald's got to eat, so. <laughs> Nick's going to do dishes because my side's <laughs> all over. Okay. No, that was a count because you work for it. I love all the positive comments we've had tonight, but I do have another concern. I work with the count or the city school district food box and most of our people that we help out they also get a twenty dollar dylan's card most of these people don't have reliable transportation sometimes not even to get out to get the box so we're going to have to think of what we can do the minister alliance does this for us i know at christmas they got over a thousand dollars worth of dylan's cards and so it's another thing to think about, not only the elderly, but some of them that don't have transportation. We will definitely be looking at the transportation issue, there's no question. Does anybody else wish to make a comment at this time? Once again, that's your Dylan's card. <laughs> Nick and I, we use Walgreens for our prescriptions. I think you guys all know me. I'm Linda Welch. And um, maybe perhaps the, the way we need to pursue this then is try to convince them to leave us at least maybe the equipment that's in the store and really push that hard. Because... If we start our own business or help someone start start it, that's going to be the biggest expense. So I think maybe we really need to push that. We will do our best. Uh, Can I comment on that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you all remember the Raven family? It's Ronan known as Raven. Well, I talked to Lance Raven last night. And uh, I was talking to him about the cost of starting this business up. And he said, well, what about the equipment in the building? And I said, well, it's there. And I said, it's old. And uh, I said, I don't know why they would move it. And he, he worked for Dillon's. He worked for Mammals here in St. John. He worked for Dillon's in St. John. He worked for Dillon's in, in uh, Hutchinson. And he's now in Missouri, and it's a small market he works for. But anyway, he said, offer him a dollar. He said, that's going to get them some goodwill. They've created a lot of bad will. So he said, if they will give you the equipment, he said, that's going to create some goodwill. <laughs> and he said, they have no use for it, I guarantee you. He said it might not be new, but he said when they open a new store, everything is new. <laughs> so he said they've got a bunch of equipment sitting over there, shelving. He said they won't use it. He said they won't use anything in that building. So whoever is the negotiator, and we need somebody that can really negotiate, 
uh, we need to get that building and we need to get it full of equipment and full of shelves so somebody can just step in and load it up. Now, I don't know who your negotiator is going to be, but I wrote down something here that I think somebody, a, uh, this is a fine mess we're in, isn't it, Ollie? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone here from the lodge this evening that would be willing to speak? You can come to my side. <laughs> I'm just curious if whatever information that you can give us that doesn't interfere with anything contractually that you may have going on with Dylan's would be beneficial. We're still in negotiations with Dylan's on the store and the equipment. So we appreciate it if everybody can hold off for about a week before we get something figured out again. Yeah. Mr. C. Yeah. Um, Bill Clausy. I, I was just more uh, thinking in lines of the people that they dump that work for doings in a local store that some for a long time, some maybe not as long, but uh, was any consideration given to them other means of employment, or are they, are they just cutting them off saying you're getting nothing? It's my understanding that they offered the, the St. John employees um, positions in either Larned, Pratt, or Great Bend. Now, how many of the employees are going to take advantage of that? I have no idea. I know we have a couple of employees here this evening, but I don't think they're going to be willing to talk to us. Um, what are Paul's operating hours? Seven to eight, Monday through Saturday, noon to six on Sunday for anyone who couldn't hear. How many people in, in here tonight have been to Paul's grocery store? How many people in here tonight have been to Paul's grocery store? Paul's grocery store is tremendous. Uh, Jim runs a heck of a business. We stop in there periodically. Uh, we grab a few things. I take clients over there. We stop. Your, your lunches that you serve are awesome. Uh, so we spend some time over there. You're here tonight. You're encouraging us to cut up our, our cards. And, and I know you want us to, to come over and, and do business with you. And I think that we should. So my question, since you're here and you're encouraging us to do that, would be uh, if the guys from the lodge can get things worked out if we have a store here, if we have a, the equipment is sitting here, you, you've been in the store business a long time, I mean is it something that you would be interested in doing uh, as a second store? Kind of putting him on the spot there, aren't you Richard? Hey, there's, a reason, the there, there's a reason he's here and, and I think that that's a fair question. Getting kind of tight lipped here, but... Uh... <laughs> consider it. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's not an easy job. Lots of dedication, lots of headaches. Um, ask any retailer, their number one headache is help. That's the number one headache. And I would entertain the idea. There would be a lot of negotiating with Lodge. If they quit, if, if Dylan's pulled out and sold it for one dollar, that would be great for you guys. It would be great for somebody that went in to start the business. You're talking inventory and then most likely the POS system. Them things aren't cheap. You know that it's still just that alone. You're probably talking two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand, just that alone to get it stocked, restocked in the POS system. And then you got your labor, and that that 
yeah, I won't go any further right now, but you know, that there would be definitely a lot of negotiation with the lodge as far as somebody coming in and opening up another store. Plus the community of St. John. I said, Jim, did you say a contract with the lodge keeping another store from opening up, or what did you mean? No, 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 no. It's just uh, if the lodge, like you said, buy the equipment for a dollar, that's going to be a whole lot easier for somebody to move in. Right. I mean, if that building's empty, nobody in their right mind is going to invest in it. I mean, you're not going to find a, a grocery owner anywhere that's going to do it and not own the building. It won't happen. I also, uh, um, like I said, I moved here about three years ago. Prior to this, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. I have a real estate license in Georgia, and I've also done uh, low voltage contracting. And I am actually the house I'm in. I am exchanging re renovations of this house for rent. So I have a lot of experience in construction and doing repairs and remodeling and this kind of stuff, as well as dealing with contracts and negotiations and these kinds of things. Would you say your name again? My name is Brandon Crawford. Jim, I guess I got a question for you, and that would be, is there any way, I noticed that you're handing out the flyers and stuff from your store here tonight. Is there any possible way that we could get on a weekly basis or however often you put out a flyer so that those of us in St. John would be in the loop for your specials and everything that way? Yes, tomorrow morning I will be over here at 8 o'clock at the post office find out all the, the city route numbers, rural routes, the PO box, and we'll get flyers over here. Hopefully, I think February 3rd. I think that's the Thank you. stand outside of Dylan's store and hand them out. <laughs> I'm Debbie Waddle. I recently moved back to St. John and um, I know that a couple things that I've seen on Facebook that I, I think we need to consider looking at <coughs> is um, the Dollar General has a market store option and I think that somebody also mentioned um, where's Amy? Something about uh, K-State's Rural Initiative. So even though we've got some options um, that have been discussed tonight, there's still other things out there. And I like um, uh, the mayor's uh, comment about getting a committee together to look at something so that we have, once we have something, we can keep it and we can support it and we can find a way to fund it to get it here to make it look profitable for anybody who comes in. One more time. Uh, I heard Dollar General. Okay, now what's going to happen when Dollar General does the same thing Kroger did? What's going to happen when Walmart does to what? Ellsworth, Hillsboro, Rose Hill, Kansas? Fortunately, the stores in Ellsworth and Hillsboro were tough enough and held out. Rose Hill, Kansas has nothing. Their grocery store closed down, Walmart left. Think about that. Uh, I'm Vernon Barta. Let me throw another question at you, uh, particularly at the city council. You've asked, you know, as a community, individually, we give their support, I'm sure a lot of them will. With the city council, 
consider a reduced electrical rate to operate that building? Again, we haven't had a meeting, but I think I can safely say that council would be on board with doing something to help a new business in town, especially a new grocery store. And if there's any council members in here that want to smack me, feel free to do it. <laughs> but I do believe that the city council will be more than willing to work with the new, the, whoever might be coming into the building. We recognize the importance of having a grocery store in town. Not only a new business, but the businesses that are in business need relief. I mean, uh, the utilities in St. John are a killer for business. And I know that. Um, where's, this, where's this guy from the state of, uh, oh, a representative, uh, what was your name, sir? <laughs> no, <laughs> did you not know that the Iranians have all of the money. We can't get money out of Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> it's come through China, thanks. <laughs> One other thing uh, that, as a community, we should consider is uh, stores like Dillon's, like Dollar General, they have their corporate policies. I know when I went to Dollar General, I can't special order anything from them. If I want something and they carry it in another Dollar General, they won't get it into their local store for me. Dillon's was better about that. But the other thing is, the, most of these chain grocery stores, they don't support the local economy. They don't support the local farmers. It's legal in Kansas for these grocery stores to buy and sell fresh produce from the local people, to sell farm fresh eggs from the local people. And with the outbreak of avian flu that's been all over recently, Farm fresh eggs are coming to the point where they're pretty much competitive with the store-bought factory-grown eggs anymore because of the shortage. So one of the things that we should really consider is, do you want to go the route of having a chain store that has their corporate policies and can do whatever they want to, or have somebody in that is dedicated to helping the local population and getting local produce, local honey, local fruits, these kinds of things, to do that? I'm Marlene Moore. You mentioned, mentioned produce and stuff like that. I bought a dozen eggs at Dillon's uh, a couple of days ago. They were two ninety. Two ninety seven. Yes. We went to Dollar General and they were dollar ninety. Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh. I'm Susan Lewis, and it's probably already been mentioned because so much has been mentioned, but I just wanted to reiterate, and if it hasn't been, remember when duck walls came in and they sold, I want to say like stock or something like that so that the community <laughs> could invest? I mean, and it was basically you were giving them the money, but at least we had a store. And that might be something to look at too is that we all can um, buy stock. One of the things that was really interesting to me, hang on just a second, Glenna, is the K-State program for a rural cooperative. One of the really attractive things to me with that is the ability to bring our local produce into our local store. Um, now, I didn't realize that the state allows that, so regular grocery store would probably work too. But that is something that I would like to see us be able to do, is stock the local produce that's grown in our community so that we can support our community and keep everything working. I worked for Kroger for 11 years and it was this little store right here in this town. And I can tell you now, I don't want you to feel bad and never think it's your fault because that store's leaving. You put money into it. Don't ever doubt that. And I wouldn't even begin to believe they'd have to take paper and pen and prove to me that they were losing money before I'd ever believe it. What the problem here is, is they're a big corporation and there's no compassion left. 
when it comes to corporation. They do everything, money, money, money. Amen. So, I would have a second thought about letting another company come in here that is a corporation and do the same thing to us all over again. One of the things I would like to point out to you guys is that I think it's great we're doing this because of our Dillon store. We have a lot of businesses in this town that we should be supporting every day because there are businesses. And so before we make changes in our local businesses or do things there, we need to think about how we're going to affect the people of the town. When we started the duck wall store, I was the one that sold the shares in the duck walls. And we, what we did was we sold $100 shares until uh, I raised $15,000 is what I raised. And um, people went into it knowing that it was more donation. We had to have a temporary um, securities license to do it. And we had, everybody knew that it was not a for-profit share. It was a donation. So, I mean... I mean, I looked on the site that today people say and save our Dillons. There were 1,018 people on there. You had, if everybody was to give like $50, that's $50,000. I mean, we can do a lot if we work together as a group. And, and that's going to be the bottom line. But when we do it, we're going to have to continue to do it. We can't get it in here and then start shopping elsewhere again. That's not going to work. If you don't support your local businesses, you're going to lose your local businesses. Okay. Let's um, talk about a committee to work on this. Is there anyone in the audience tonight who would be willing to volunteer their time? All right, I think we have our committee. Yeah. We'd like to gather all of those who just volunteered at the end of the meeting so we can put everybody's name down and know who we're working with. Um, as I said, city council meets on February 2nd. We will be discussing immediately transportation, we will also be talking about what we might be able to do as far as incentive for a new business to come in. Um, I'm always available. I don't have a mayor Facebook page, but I do have a personal Facebook page. Feel free to leave me your comments. Um, my phone number is out there. Somebody with a hand up back here. That's my son. I have been shopping at Paul's grocery store when his mom and dad had it. I love it, the fact that you don't have to get online to see the specials. As you notice, most of the Walmart stores, they have circulars, but they don't mail them out like Jim does. And Dylan's. I don't know if they have circulars or not, because I don't go to big stores. So, you either ask for it or something. Anyway, Jim, you said something about putting them in Dylan's bus cars. We ought to all get together and just clip them tonight and send them to Dylan's. <laughs> I have been a Walmart cashier for 11 years, and I have not worked at Walmart for over a year. And I know Dollar General has trouble keeping help. I have seen our dealings in this town have help one on the internet. And I'm sorry I didn't come in and apply at some grocery store here in our county. I have been a convenience store clerk. I have worked at, like I say, Walmart for 11 years. And I've seen that big corporation tear down more mom and pop stores. Like and now, a lot of our people that shop at these neighborhood markets 
are so upset that they're being closed, they don't want to go to big stores in Great Bend and Hutch. And where Dillon's have been spending their money is these big, fancy super Dillon's. They could have saved some money there by keeping the one on 30th instead of building a big, fancy one. All of those things are true. Unfortunately, Dillon's is a corporation and they don't answer to us. Okay, I would like to try and get... I said I'd be on the committee and I will be on the committee. But I want to tell you one thing. We do need to support our local businesses, all of them. And the second thing is, she was talking about her Facebook page. You won't find my name or my name. <laughs> if you want to know my telephone number and want to say something, it's on the sign of the storage unit. Because I don't play that Facebook rate. <laughs> That was what I was ready, getting ready to do before uh, the last lady spoke. Go ahead, Misty. I'm Misty Newell. Um, Jim, do you need any help at Paul's? Because what Dylan's has offered our high school students is you may not have a job, after, or you won't have a job after February 6th, but you can drive to Dylan's in Great Bend and have a job. Okay, these kids are... Yes, basically minimum wage. We'll give you a little bit of a raise, but you're going to have to drive there. Okay, let's think this out. Dylan's store in Great Bend is already employed for Dylan's store's size. So how many hours are these kids going to be getting? Eight, 12 a week? Will that even pay for their gas? No, they're going to be out. So Jim, do you need help? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I just want you to remember when you hear the Dylan's name, not to think badly, because when Dylan's was running, D D Dylan family was running this, and I transferred over when we had the store where it's at now, and I worked 31 years there. Well, I retired two years earlier because of the way Kroger came in and took over. And I just want you to remember the Dylan family cared about their employees. It's not considered Dylan's anymore, it's corporate. That's what yeah. I know. And whenever they mention like Dylan's, it's still Dylan's here. But even Ray Dylan came out. I told him if he wanted to see a good produce department to come out. This was when he was in the hospital up there and he had his chauffeur bring him out. And that's just the kind of people they were. So I want the Dylan name not to be torn down by Carver. Mary, you have one of the best produce departments around. <laughs> Okay, for anyone who wants to reach me, my telephone number is 620-617-4183. The city office will give it out to you if you don't have the ability to write it down right now. I will, may not answer from 8 to 4, but I will get back to you, I promise. Okay, you ready? It's a long one. Will the city office get that one out too? Yes, yes we'll they will. That out too. Yeah, the city office will give it out, but I will give it out now for anyone who wants it. It's S J M A Y O R O W E N S at gmail dot com. S J Mayor Owens at gmail dot com. The city has one too. You guys can do S J City at gbta dot net, and I can forward them on to the mayor if you guys want to too. Um, I think we're going to try and hold the February 2nd council meeting here in the annex for anyone who wants to attend. Just give you guys the heads up on that now. Um, I'd like to get the people who volunteered to be on the committee to come up front before you leave this evening, just so that we know who everybody is. Are there any other comments?
You, you can go start the dishes if you want to. <laughs> I'm Leon Dunn. I've been in the community just a little bit longer than Jerry Long. <laughs> the things that I have to say, I think St. John started downhill when John Deere closed Jack Moody's implement store. Because a lot of folks, Jack had parts nobody else had. They'd come to town, they'd go to the grocery store, they'd have to pick up something. If I was a business owner in St. John, I'd be very nervous. That ball started rolling downhill in my mind when Jack Moody closed. And once you get a ball rolling downhill, it's going to take some dynamic leadership and some dedicated people of the community to stop it or to turn it around. I know the emotions are running high at this meeting tonight. Those folks that volunteered for the committee is wonderful. I've been involved in a couple of things that we tried to get started in St. John, and I'm telling you, you'll to spend an awfully lot of time and effort. And I hope if that committee needs help, if they call for a meeting six months from now, that there's this many people that will go to that meeting to help them. Because what you're trying to accomplish is not going to be easy, and it's going to take some sincere dedication on everybody's part. And I echo the fact that the businesses in St. John we need to support. There may be one or two that may be closing. I think we've got a lumber yard in town that's second to none. And if you don't patronize that lumber yard, you need to go in there because they're outstanding. Anyone else? I would just like to say thank you to everyone who is here. It, it does my heart good to see the community rallied around a cause. I wish it wasn't Dylan's closing. But I'm also going to say I wish that the community would rally around all of our events and things that we're trying to accomplish this way. We have a great community here. Some of you have heard me get on my soapbox before. I'm a California transplant. This is one of the nicest small communities I've ever been in. I want to see it stay that way. So we need to work together to do what we can to keep our community thriving and maybe even growing a little bit. So if there's nothing else, thank you all for coming out tonight. We appreciate your time and we will keep you posted.